Hello once again people of the internet and welcome back to Retro Rewind where we take a look at and review old games and see if they're still worth your time playing. So should you play Half-Life from 1998? Before we get into the technical aspects of playing an old game on modern hardware, let's talk about the game itself. Gameplay. Half-Life, where lab coats meet laser beams and nerdy scientists moonlight as interdimensional pest controllers. Buckle up, because we're diving into the quantum blender of gameplay treasures. Meet Gordon Freeman, your average nerdy looking theoretical physicist that is concerningly good with a gun. You begin the game travelling to your lab in a frustratingly long monorail ride, and after a quick science experiment goes sideways, BOOM! Alien invasion, releasing a barrage of strange creatures on the base. You are tasked with reaching the surface for help, but the help doesn't actually help. It's a first person shooter, with a variety of weapons at your disposal to dispatch the variety of alien foes. And then there's a crowbar, your trusty Swiss army tool for alien skull cracking and crate opening. There's the occasional puzzle-like scenario thrown in there too. After all, you are a scientist. By modern standards, it doesn't do anything groundbreaking. But for the time, it was a giant leap for the genre, with a competent enough story to keep you clanging your crowbar at the creeps. The optimum way to play is with a mouse and keyboard, but it does have modern controller support too. The controls are responsive and mostly intuitive, with options to rebind all the controls, alter sensitivity, and also includes an auto-aim option that is incredibly generous in its abilities. Verdict. Graphics. The game was designed for 640x480 CRT monitors, and its visuals reflected the technology of the late 90s. But the game has had various patches throughout the years, including one recently to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the game. Boot it up today and the graphics are passable and not too distracting, but are definitely still a product of their time. The geometry is very square and the faces are frankly nightmare inducing. But for a 25 year old game, it's still incredibly impressive. There's also a Half-Life Source, a remaster using the Source engine that Half-Life 2 runs on. The game looks much better. The textures and lighting had a nice makeover and in 4K, it's actually quite pleasant to play. But there's a big problem with this version that I'll touch on later in the video. Verdict. Audio. For the most part, the audio is pretty good. However, you'll come across a few sound effects or voice lines that sound like they were phoned in. Like, literally recorded over a phone line. Weren't you supposed to be in the test chamber half an hour ago? Excuse me, Gordon, but I'm rather busy now. I don't know if it's some sort of terrible compression issues from 1998 or an issue with your actual recording. At the end of the day though, it's not too distracting or jarring and doesn't take anything away from the experience. Verdict. Please to obtain, install and run. So the primary and most obvious way to obtain the original Half-Life is through Valve's own platform Steam. Via Steam you have two options, Half-Life or Half-Life Source. Half-Life is the original game that, thanks to its recent 25-year anniversary, has seen a recent patch. However, that patch hasn't done much to enable the game to work on modern hardware, as I was unable to even start the game without inputting some launch option settings to disable full screen. Once running, you have some very limited graphics options with the resolution going up to 2048 by 1536. It's playable, and once you pass the launch hiccups, runs fairly well. Half-Life Source, however, is a solid remaster of the game that in my opinion is the best way to play Half-Life without any issues booting the game and a much sleeker experience overall. Confusingly though, Valve has removed this version from being searched in the Steam store but you can still find it via a Google search. Half-Life also released on Dreamcast and is even playable in VR natively in the Quest 2 and 3 via sideloading, which is also a fantastic way to play, once you've got to grips with the motion controls. The price at the time of writing is 71 pence with the RRP at £7. Half-Life Source is 85p with the RRP of £8.50 and if you wanted to play it on Dreamcast, well, 
Good luck finding a copy of that. If the price is different when you're watching this video, let us know down in the comments how much you've seen it for, and also how much it costs for in your country. Verdict. Final thoughts. If you've never played this game, it's definitely worth digging into video game history and giving this a go. I would personally recommend the Source version of the original, but this may be a controversial opinion. And once you're done, make sure you head over to the much superior Half-Life 2 to continue the story. And then join the rest of planet Earth in bugging Gabe Newell for Half-Life 3 and a conclusion to the saga. Final verdict. Subscribe for more.